Nigeria's journey into nationhood, its political struggles and the events that have shaped its current realities are not dissimilar to a pilgrim's journey through a labyrinth of uncertainty when an even more daunting valley of expectation awaits. Hundreds of tribes and tongues settled in this geographical space, existing in their enclaves as distinct groups for centuries. The politics of trade and conquest, expressed in colonialism, however, began to give the nation its identity, having been marked and formally annexed by Britain in 1865. Two distinct protectorates became one in 1914 for the administrative convenience of the nation's steel-handed overlords. The might of the colonialists and their imperial will notwithstanding, it became obvious that this large entity would be difficult to completely dominate. Lords followed lords, and constitutions melted for new ones. But none could even marginally capture the growing clamor for self-rule, a much darker skin at the helm of Africa's most populous nation. The drivers of this consciousness had the spotlight on them. The rhetorics were fueled by passion, commitment, courage, and the unique foresight that a giant would soon rise. We in Nigeria appreciate the advantages which the size of our country and of its population give us, but we have absolutely no aggressive intentions. Nigeria will attain independence on October 1, 1960. So it makes no difference to me whether the Sadarna or Balewa or Chief Awolo or myself will become the first Prime Minister. So long as Nigeria is free, I'll be satisfied. Independence for Nigeria in 1960 is imperative. But independence for Nigeria as a corporate entity is not enough. The peoples of Nigeria must at the same time be guaranteed their freedom. The nation formally gained independence in 1960 to good wishes and intentions. Its first steps in self-rule saw some faltering movements as those at the wheel sought answers. These chapters were not in the original plot. Power tussle and stoic viewpoints made compromise difficult to achieve. We started as provinces and the provinces themselves were a kind of amalgamation of different groups in each province. But when the British came, after they conquered us, they now set up initially 12 provinces. From there, and changes into three regions, north, west, and east. And they amalgamate, they put the three together into a Federal Republic of Nigeria. The three at that time each had a governor and premier, at the center, we had the prime minister and also ceremonial president. We are highly intolerant of opposition, of any kind, whether it's in the political party, or we it's in the church, if we it's in the company. We don't want to hear from the other side. And that was what led in 1962 to the federal government led by Balewa declaring a state of emergency in Western Nigeria. And um, it was an intra-party issue, which led, allowed the federal government to intervene and declare a, a state of emergency in the, in the South. And that crisis lingered on until the elections of 1965, Western Regional Election of 65, which were the most massively rigged election in our history. While the push and shove were going on, the military maintained stoic silence in spite of happenings in other nations. This will not remain so, 
for much longer. You know, all people on board the ship, Nigerians, Ghanaians, uh, you know, British, uh, you know, or whoever was in the boat, when they knew that I was uh, a senior officer, they were asking me a question. Do you think that a coup can take place in Nigeria? Uh, a coup in Nigeria? Of course, you, you know, I you know, determinedly uh, fought against that sort of question. I said, impossible. No, we are an apolitical army and we are not trained to, uh, to, you know, to interfere with, uh, with, with the government, but to be loyal to the government and loyal to the country, loyal, loyal to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to the head of uh, the government. And, uh, and, you know, so, uh, you know, such a thing, you know, cannot happen in Nigeria as far as uh, one was concerned. And uh, so that was how things went until 12 days by, uh, you know, to uh, on, board the, uh, on board the ship, we arrived in Accra. And during that time, there were three coups. Uh, in Central and West Africa, and one of them, one of them was uh, uh, very close to Nigeria, and so some of the people who were still on board the ship and probably had asked me that question, you know, before they asked me, uh, uh, what, uh, how now? So I had to say to them, well, uh, uh, let me say this: it is. Uh, impo it is Im uh, Im impossible uh, you know, that this sort of thing could happen. But uh, let me be. Uh, but all I said was, uh, it is getting too home close, uh, too close home for comfort. Nigeria's first coup d'état on the 15th of January 1966 brought the First Republic to its end. Its brutal outcome prompted a counter coup carried out by General Johnson, Agui Ironsi. And of course, when the military came, um, again, another blunder was committed. When Ironsi issued a de decree, I think decree number two, uh, bringing federal government to, to an end in Nigeria and declaring that Nigeria had become a unitary government and that the states had become provinces. Fundamental error. Again, not recognizing that Nigeria is highly heterogeneous. At the last count, there were about 443 or 448 distinct ethnic and linguistic groups in Nigeria. Now, to treat those groups as if they were homogeneous and identical is a big error. That was why Ironsi was overthrown. The federal military government under Ironsi lasted for some months. Then, there was a third toppling of government in the same year, which produced General Yakubu Goang as head of state. I had to become uh, the head of state, and I can assure you uh, the fear that uh, uh, that came over me uh, that uh, so is that it is me. It is never in my thought uh, whatsoever. Um, my ambition was one day to. He probably had my, uh, you know, had the army, but uh, not determined to become the head of state. But with the problem where, if I were having problem, uh, officers uh, being uh, d uh, disobeyed by uh, by other ranks, uh, you know, other than either those that they know. I think the only way thing that one. They can do was if I meant to see whatever uh, one had to ac uh, accept that with the agreement of other members of the uh, Supreme Military Council that were there, of course, probably except, uh, you know, uh, I think Ojuku, uh, who was in, in, in Kano, and, uh, and later on, of course, uh, it moved to, uh, to Inugu. The crisis brewing took a leap into the flames as Nigeria was plunged into a civil war which lasted for two years, six months and one week. 
the ties of brotherhood were badly strained, but a new handshake was extended and taken. As soon as in fact, the report was made that in fact, there is in fact, the capitulation of the rebel forces uh, on the 12th, you know, of uh, uh, the 12th of January. Uh, immediately, of course, uh, it, my reaction made a speech, you know, to say, we thank God I mean, the war is over and the suffering of the ordinary people, uh, you know, is, is over. And one made the speech of no victor, no vanquish. General Murtala Muhammad became the nation's head of state on the 28th of July, 1975, with a promise to return the nation to a civilian rule by October 1, 1979. We should explore how to create a new parliamentary system which will not arouse ecstatic tribal frenzies which were characteristic of the previous political atmosphere. He did not live to see the day, being a victim of an abortive coup. General Obasanjo became head of state and saw through the promise given by his boss. And we, 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 we meticulously planned and followed step by step, drafting or setting a committee to draft a new constitution, establishing a constituent assembly, conducting an election based on the new constitution, and handed, uh, handing over to the newly elected uh, government. The Second Republic, Nigeria's second romance with democracy. This experience failed when vows were to be renewed in 1983. They failed because of the rigging of the election in 1983, when uh, Funaguro was talking about a landslide all over the place. And some little people said, some little people said no, this is not landslide, it is gone slide. It was the massive rigging of 1983 that led to the demise of the government. Because MPN didn't want any other group to rule. Remember that MPN government of 1793 was a minority government. Uh, MPN had 37%, Shagari had 37% of the vote. I was president. He had about 40% of the members in the house. So it was a minority government that now wanted to become majority by force through rigging, and so the ship capsized. Another military intervention brought in the men in khaki for another stint. In the early 90s, General Ibrahim Babangida promised to return to civil rule. The parties formed were collapsed into two, with elections held into governorship and legislative positions. But the dream faltered at the presidential polls with the annulment of the June 12, 1993 presidential election. Most of us, when we were there, came up with a civilian program after the military intervention. Uh, General Jack Gowan had a program, and uh, I had a program. Murtala Mohammed Obasanjo, they had a program. So we realized that military intervention is no longer going to be acceptable. The people wanted to elect their own representative people who will lead them, not by the barrel of the gun. And so whenever the military staged a coup, the first thing that came to their mind is to come up with a program of um, civilian return to civil rule. And there were attempts at democratizing the country. And uh, each attempt had its own uh, hiccups here and there and uh, uh, fell by the wayside. It started with uh, General Ibrahim Babangida, who was then uh, military president. And uh, he did what they called 
uh, zero party elections. Again, he went into uh, a two party uh, system and uh, tried to put in a national assembly um, that was under the military government and was uh, looking forward to having full democracy when uh, election for the presidency takes place. And that was attempted when um, uh, Chief MKO Abiola uh, won, supposedly at that time, won the election under the SDP. These were the two political parties uh, which were introduced by General Babangida. Of course, uh, that was not to be due to certain internal exigencies that uh, were mainly associated with the military themselves. The controversy that trailed the annulment led to the Babangida administration stepping aside for an interim government under Chief Ernest Shonikon, which barely had time to settle down before it was muscled aside by General Sani Abacha. After General Abacha's demise on the 8th of June 1998, it made way for the emergence of General Abdusalami Abubakar, whose administration was the midwife of the Fourth Republic. I inherited a country which was in turmoil, the Prisby. We were almost boycotted by all the the international community we have so many sanctions. So when I came into power, our objectivity first was to normalize our relationship with the international community and try to see how we can organize a transition program where we can have a democratically elected government. So we set up the parameters and uh, parties were formed. And, uh, we organized an election and the uh, election took place and uh, President Obasanjo eventually emerged as the president-elect and he was sworn in. Former head of state Chief Olusegun Obasanjo of the People's Democratic Party PDP won the 1999 presidential election and served for two terms. President Umaru Musa Er Adua won the 2007 general election. He, however, died in 2010. Vice President Goodluck Jonathan served out his term and was given the mandate to lead by Nigerian voters in the 2011 elections. This is my, when I became a deputy governor, of course, you know what happened in Alamis, uh, Bayasa State then. Uh, at the time, I, my boss then, later Alamis, was arrested in the UK. Ordinarily, it would have made me to act. But people spoke with him, so he couldn't make me the deputy governor to act. And the state was like floating with that, a very, uh, say, formal acting governor. So it is the State House of Assembly that passed a resolution that I should act. So, yes, I did not meet them. They felt that, look, the state must have to go forward, irrespective of what was happening with our principal. They passed a House of Assembly resolution, then I become an acting governor. Before he was later impeached, of course, I became a substantive government. And similarly, happened when I was the vice president. When late, my late boss, Eradua, was sick. And there was no communication with the National Assembly for me to act. And of course, he remembered the popular doctrine of necessity, which I did not initiate. So when I looked at these three things, it makes me believe that governance or leadership is about the people. It's not about an individual. In 2015, the All Progressives Congress, a product of a merger of the Action Congress of Nigeria, ACN, Congress for Progressive Change, CPC, the All Nigeria People's Party, ANPP, and a faction of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, defeated the PDP to usher in a new order at the centre. The patriotic concession by President Jonathan and his call to congratulate APC's Muhammad Buhari remains one of the great acts of statesmanship in the Fourth Republic. I was going to lose the election. It was not an issue to me. 
because it's a decision I took far back in 2007 when I became a vice president. And I made up, I remember I mentioned to my friend who became my principal secretary when I became a president, that, look, I don't like this. If I don't know whether one day by divine providence I'll become a president, I didn't know I was going to be. One thing I must do is to sanitize the electoral process. So that if a, president, a Nigerian president wins the election, we will not begin to doubt whether that election was properly conducted or not. The elections must be free and fair. And that is why when I became the president, the first thing I do was to do a little, a little reforms that I made and appointed somebody. People say, why do you even appoint somebody you don't know? But I said, look, we must conduct elections that people in the world will accept it. And when I won that 2011 election, people, world leaders were struggling to call me on the phone to congratulate me. But when we won the election 20, 2007, people refused to congratulate us. It was very, very embarrassing. So when 2015 came up, I knew things were not done. There yeah, are some lapses from the INEC. So there were issues. There is no, it's difficult to conduct the election, there will be no issues. But even at that, I asked myself, Will I create a scenario where it will lead to the death of so many Nigerians? And I'll remember in my campaign and see that my ambition should be. Uh, it's not what the blood of any Nigerian. And I kept it. I meant it. I meant it. So it was easy for me when I look at the scenario to take that decision. Because the country was tense. I was the president, so I had the security reports. The country was tense. In the ensuing years of the APC administration at the center, the need to revisit and correct past errors echoed. And so, efforts were made to exorcise the ghost of June 12, 1993. Our decision to recognize and honor June 12 and its actors is in the national interest. It is aimed at settling national healing process and the reconciliation of the 25-year history will cause by the annulment of the June 12 elections. In an effort to get more inclusion and the buying of a younger generation, the not-too-young Tehran bill got the backing of the lawmakers and the executive. Conversely, the women folk have not been so lucky as the efforts to get legislative backing for a greater purchase for women in the nation's political landscape fell flat in the National Assembly. Being a woman in politics in Nigeria is like uh, pulling teeth, as the British will say. Uh, but uh, over the years, and particularly under the administration of uh, President Mohamed Buhari, we have made some strides. Uh, luckily, we have uh, a first lady who is passionate about issues regarding women. But it's not just women. We have a lot of men who are in support of women uh, being in the forefront of politics. Talking about being in the forefront of politics, we are not talking about taking over completely. We are talking about working side by side with our men, you know, as equal partners in the development of our nation. So we need to be proactive, we need to get up, we need to, we need to act. The 2023 general election is the latest installment in the Nigerian political history. It was keenly contested in more ways than one. We will continue to war with the state to eliminate violence, crimes, and inhumanity to man. At times, it looked like the umpire struggled to make itself heard over the loud voices of contestation. Tinubu Bola Ahmed of the APC, having satisfied the requirements of the law, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. A political train has reached its stop in the subway. Well, a new one is taken off. New leadership, alliances, handshakes, 
and challenges have bordered. But the nation continues its journey with hope in the driver's seat. We must all join hands to work hard so that we build a country for our grandchildren. See, we plan for ourselves in this country. We plan for ourselves. Oh, remove subsidy, oh, don't remove subsidy because I'm thinking about, oh, if I'm going to buy petrol in the evening, what, how much will I pay for the elite and things like that? We, we, but those of us in the government and those of us who are in business or private, people, everybody plan for himself. They don't plan for our grandchildren. And until we start planning for our grandchildren, we can never change it. Forget about ourselves. Plan for the children. We are maturing. I would say we are matured. We are maturing because we are learning and we are learning fast. Um, when we introduced our return to civil rule, we talked about learning process. What it is to educate the people who are going to come up to be the leaders to educate the politicians, to educate virtually everybody, those who want to come in, either as legislatures or members of the executive and so on. And uh, we are on the right track, and I hope we will continue to follow the correct track. For the love of country and to make it, uh, and for the responsibility that Nigeria has to most of the black people anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. And with Nigeria had that possibility if they can really even look at things in the overall you know, good and interest of the, you know, of the people. <laughs>